Уважаемые коллеги, следующий доклад предлагает. Esteemed colleagues, first of all, allow me to welcome you at the forum. So according to the agenda, Valery Starinsky should have presented first and speak about uh, the status of the Russian cancer register. But uh, we worked uh, in this field, uh, we've worked for many years together that's why I would like to briefly inform you on the status first. In year 1996, once the first cancer register was organized based on personal data, So then we suggested to cover the whole country with this new system. So, and everything was headed by the Moscow Herzen Institute. That's why they received this task to supervise this uh, uh, task over all the country. And, um, in, um, and then in 96, the order of the Minister of Health was published, number 420, about setting up registers across all regions. At that time, we haven't thought about generalizing everything into an all-Russia all Russia registry, uh, because there were special state report forms submitted to the ministry, form of to calculate disease um, incidents and another form which allowed uh, for analytics. And then 10 years passed after the decree was published and another decision was made to depersonalize, the, to depersonalize um, the database and then submit it to Moscow. And yesterday, Mrs. Griftsova Olga reported uh, the status of this item about half of the Russian Federation different territories submit annually electronic data to Moscow where the data gets aggregated but for the time t time being there were no publications with the generalized data at uh, particular Russian territories, there are individual for the territory cancer registers, and they do some publications for regions. So some regions uh, do it better than others, but we have a great diversity in our huge country. So during the panel meeting, we um, indeed uh, looked into the details uh, into this issue into the lack of staff and uh, to the lack of skills however at the moment russian territories are now obliged to submit summary data therefore we more or less understand uh, the cancer prevalence picture across the country and the institute named after Hertzen annually publishes two volumes, which um, gives you a more or less accurate picture. See, but in my presentation, I will focus on the background of cancer registration in Russia. But uh, I would put it widely, because this is the registration of cancers in the USSR, which included the Russian Federation at the time, as we look at history. 
I think it's a very sad picture, and I hope this is the last time it stays this way. It shows the number of cancer registers across the world. Purple identifies countries it's like uh, Australia or Canada, um, Scandinavian countries, where the whole territory is covered with uh, cancer registers uh, based on personal data and uh, subsequent, subsequent substantial analysis. The blue color shows countries with um, some registers, and green are the countries which have only one register. This huge green area is green because here in St. Petersburg, over the last 30 years, we were able, we were given this opportunity to present cancer data. It started in 1982 when our institute was the leader in the project, and uh, we published a book so-called Cancers on Five uh, Continents, and we uh, made um, um, an addendum to this book uh, covering uh, the USSR and um, neighboring countries. And then we also started to collect materials for Leningrad and St. Petersburg. And of course, at early stages, like similar like to other countries. So the data was collected manually, paper-based. When in 93, we set up the first Russian cancer register operating under international standards, then these data was uh, personalized. But uh, we submitted it uh, to the ministry in a uh, depersonalized uh, fashion. So, and now we must focus on um, oncological issues more deeply. Here are key causes uh, of cancer. Dark spots show that the main primary cause is uh, prostate cancer. Pinkish color, that's uh, the first uh, place in the structure of men's uh, cancer, which is lung cancer. In Mongolia, however, we see that it's, it is liver cancer. In Asian um, region, stomach cancers lead. These are data in the volume 10, in volume 10. Now the picture about women. Across the world, um, the first position is taken by breast cancer. At the same time, as you see on the map, there are some green areas where cervical cancer is in the lead. It also uh, portrays the economic situation in these specific territories. In 1993, on the donations uh, of uh, Morozov, a hospital was open for 56 uh, beds uh, for cancer patients. Only at the beginning of the 20th century, they paid attention to this problem and understood that they had to treat it. It was clear that uh, these uh, patients uh, had uh, late stages uh, of cancer and they only had palliative treatment. At the same time, in St. Petersburg in 1911, a Yelininskaya hospital was constructed for poor women with uh, oncopathology for 50 beds. There were attempts uh, to create uh, an all Russian society against uh, cancer. It happened in 1908, and in 1914, the first all Russian conference uh, on uh, um, fighting against uh, cancer was organized. Consequences were drawn, uh, and they tried to analyze uh, incidents of cancer disease. Uh, Mr. Levshin created uh, a questionnaire about the incidence uh, of uh, cancer. Mr. Toichkin uh, wrote uh, a PhD thesis uh, where he summarized uh, the information in St. Petersburg uh, and uh, calculated intensive mortality indicators uh, 8.3 for 10,000. And the most important information was uh, that the number of people uh, dying from cancer 
was 3.6 percent. Nowadays in Russia, this indicator is almost uh, 15. In St. Petersburg, it's almost uh, 25 percent. This um, proves uh, that the structure of oncopathology has changed uh, and uh, the incidence and mortality rates uh, have changed too. At the same time, they determined the structure, what was taken by the first um, what what took the first place uh, among male uh, gaster and esophagus uh, among women Elvis cancer and this uh, was the data that was collected to analyze situation um, the same information gaster esophagus and Elvis cancer in 1913 uh, Mr. Petrov came up with the data that you can see on the slide uh, these are rough indicators for four cities of the Russian Empire where the Indi the highest indicator was uh, in Warsaw. You can see the dynamics of the process and how the problem aggravated. In the first years of uh, Soviet Union, a number of R&D institutes was organized in 1918, uh, Rankin, um, X-ray and Radiological Institute in 1920 in Kharkov in 1926, Research and uh, Development Institution named after Petrov in 1923 in Petrograd. The first incidence registry was organized where they registered all the types uh, of diseases and Mr. Frankel um, played an important role in that process uh, who founded uh, one of the chairs uh, in uh, Medical Institute in St. Petersburg, what did they find uh, out? Um, in Leningrad, um, the mortality rate um, of uh, people from um, cancer was lower than mortality rate uh, of uh, patients dying from tuberculosis in Europe and America. The situation was different, and those were the problems that Mr. Frankel and uh, his followers dealt with. Up uh, till the Second World War, or the Great Patriotic War, as we call it in Russia, they began to make a registry of cancer patients first in large cities, but with the beginning of war, the process stopped. But on the 30th of April 1945, a decree of uh, the Council of uh, People's Commissars uh, was published. Uh, on the measures to improve oncological treatment of population. And that was an attempt uh, to organize uh, oncological treatment in the country officially. The registration of uh, cancer patients was reestablished in large cities. And you can see that from 1948 uh, into 1952, the number of uh, large cities in the register increased from 750 to 13,000. In 1953, for the first time, they organized a, a widespread and mandatory registry of cancer patients in our country. And I would like to show you the first cover of uh, the Organization Against Cancer in the USSR that was made in 1962 when the first conference took place. And other publications were made in 1965, but back then, there appeared uh, uh, two publications about cancer in the five uh, continents. And those, uh, the beginning of those publications uh, were not reliable because the system has just started to develop and it was too early to make some clear assessments. It was impossible to use those data. But with the third publication, and in Russia, starting with 1970, the indicators were quite reliable. The system was well established. And that was the time from uh, which we can assess uh, the dynamics. And nevertheless, in the Western countries and in Russia, there are still some problems that we face. And I would like to show you the cover of another publication that was uh, developed by Mr. Romansky and Mr. Serenka. All the journals that I show you, uh, this research uh, was organized uh, by the employees of R&D institutions and the Ministry of Healthcare of the USSR because because these uh, institutions were located within the system of the Ministry of Healthcare. 
R&D Center named after Petrov uh, created a set of programs on the development of information systems uh, of oncology treatment in 1980s. Uh, those uh, programs were approved by the Ministry of Healthcare, but uh, the country did not develop, did not uh, leave uh, for too long, uh, so the information was not personalized. Uh, they used uh, big uh, um, computers, uh, and uh, in 1983, we developed uh, an appendix to the third publication of uh, the monograph called uh, Cancer in Five Continents. I would like to show you this cover. We had two publications in 1982 and 83. In 1980s, when we prepared another publication of uh, Cancer on Five Continents publications, we gathered information about different territories uh, and uh, created uh, a book uh, about malignant tumors. For the first time in that book, uh, we made a list uh, of localizations because before that, official report uh, can included only 10 units. That uh, was uh, quite a big data about all the malignant tumors, but those were only the leading types of um, malignant tumors, and uh, the same applied to children, because we collected data um, for children, and the first group was from zero to 30 years. And Mr. Merkov, who actually established that process, who was the head of uh, statistics department in the Ministry of Healthcare in the USSR, he said uh, uh, there were no incidents of cancer and the number of people was not big, but we know all the rules uh, um, and this, we know that the structures uh, of cancer development uh, among grown-ups and children are different. Later on, uh, from uh, the 6th uh, till the 10th uh, um, publication, uh, we developed uh, also a book uh, called Cancer on Five Continents, and I would like to show you the cover of uh, Cancer Incidents in Five Continents, uh, Volume 10. We it took us a lot of efforts uh, to create uh, the methods of uh, data summarizing. Uh, we organized um, school of oncologists, uh, and then we offered those who had worked with our programs to develop programs uh, and provide information for the next volume of the book, uh, Cancer on Five Continents. Uh, in 2011, we developed another book called uh, Oncological Statistics about the methods of gathering information about cancer. Here you can see the first part. Here is the second, and they were republished in Germany. The first part looks like that, the second like that. I think uh, that it's very interesting and uh, very important to publish information about uh, survival survival rate of oncological patients. When we prepared the first uh, volume, we checked uh, surviving rate in Russia and uh, on average in Europe, and we found out that our data are more or less same. And only then the decision was taken to develop the first volume about all the cancer localizations and uh, all the age groups, all the stages of cancer, and many, many other parameters, including just the logical types of tumors uh, and other information. Those books uh, contain information. They are written in two languages, Russian and English. So we would be happy to share um, the soft copies of them with uh, all of you. Please provide us with your email addresses and you will get the information. In 2015, we published uh, this book, Express Information, both in Russian and English. The second uh, version has been just uh, published and uh, we added also a segment about survival rate in St. Petersburg and the northwest of Russia. And in the previous year, we also summarized the data from all the years that uh, St. Petersburg uh, Cancer Register has been operating. We developed uh, this kind of monograph, not uh, 
on the basis of uh, registered data. You can find here geographical data um, and other maps, a lot of information. And of course, we paid much attention to surviving rate, which provides you with clear information about surviving rate and this activity. I would like to draw your attention to the following. Yesterday, at our meeting, a number of interesting presentations were made. They showed diversity of this program in our country, all the challenges that we face, and a lot of what efforts uh, our colleagues um, made to develop such uh, information because we want to have true to life uh, information um, even better than uh, official one and there are a lot of possibilities in this regard and again in the previous year we made this uh, big book which has more than 500 pages uh, called malignant uh, tumors in the northwest of russia we made it together with the um, medical centers and hospitals in the northwest of Russia. And at the end of my presentation, I would like to show you this slide. Please pay attention to it. I told you that we started uh, the process of preparing a monograph uh, on uh, surviving rate only when we saw that the quality of work was quite high and when we understood that we were entitled to provide this information to people because uh, to make a good surviving rate uh, is uh, there's no problem all the people who are dead you can say that they are they actually survived and uh, unfortunately in Russia there are some regions uh, where they do not provide clear information because there is no access to database but there are other regions that do everything properly. Please have a look here the trend of uh, surviving rate um, annually within five years within 10 years the dynamics is there it is positive yesterday we listened to presentations of our colleagues and uh, a lot of money were was allocated to diagnostics um, there are new methods of uh, cancer treatment uh, medication also develops uh, and this all contributes to better dynamics the dynamics is there it remains and this is the most important thing of course there are a lot of issues of concern that we still have to tackle and such meetings and summits that we organize and I hope that in the next year we will have more participants and people will be even more interested. They contribute much to this process. Thank you. I think I should stop here. Do we have any questions or yes, comments? Вопрос. Вопросов нет. Спасибо. No questions, thank you. I, I have a question. I hope you don't mind. Um, so I, I'm very happy to see that you are, in fact, producing um, quite a lot of data um, in books in Russian. But I am hoping that you have plans to uh, make these available in a more international form. Um, perhaps there is a possibility of the Northwest uh, cancer data being um, summarized and, and published in um, uh, in the international literature. So you're on PubMed, and therefore then the um, uh, the rest of the world will also have an appreciation of, of the, the work that has been done here. Ah, so he doesn't have a thing. Yeah, OK. OK, we'll do it. We'll, we can do it afterwards, yeah. So perhaps I can. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. So, first of all, congratulations that you have, in fact, um, you are producing far more information um, than I had anticipated, but it's, uh, it's in the Russian language and it's basically in, in the form of books or, um, as you say, soft, soft. Yeah, yeah, okay, very, yeah, very good. So I'm just hoping that you, you may be contemplating, together with some of your colleagues, in publishing um, a lot of this data, or a lot of these data, um, in, uh, in journals, uh, so that it becomes available to the international community. Ah, okay, Balshai was here. Very good. So is it okay if I translate and I, and I publish in your name? <laughs> Yeah. 
Knoch <laughs> Nayat. I don't know. Any, any other comments or questions? No? Well, once again, thank you very much. Um,